QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 Accounts Payable Graphs. Get ready because we bookkeeping pros are moving up the hilltop with QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2022. Here we are in our QuickBooks sample file, sample raw castle construction, going through the setup process with the view drop down, the open windows list on the left hand side, company drop down home page in the middle, maximizing that home page, going to the reports drop down, taking a look at the company and financial, the balance sheet standard down at the bottom. We're going to go to the customize and reports up top, changing that end date to 12-31-31-23. And then the fonts and numbers, changing that font to 14. Okay, yes please, and okay. Same thing for the income statement, reports drop down, company and financial, profit and loss, income statement, end date 12-31-23. Customizing the reports, going to the fonts and numbers, changing that font to 14, and OK, yes please, and OK. Let's go back on over to the balance sheet now in the home page, or in the open windows, I should say. And we're looking now at the accounts payable now. If I go down on the balance sheet to the liabilities, looking at the accounts payable account, this represents the money that we owe to other people for goods and services vendors have provided to us. The subsidiary reports backing that or supporting that number is and are the vendor broken out or that number broken out by vendor who owes us the money and the aging reports. We also have the graph that uh, can be provided to by QuickBooks. So let's go to those items. Reports drop down. Those would be in the vendors and payables. We have down here the aging reports. And then we have this graph, the accounts payable graph. I'd also like to go into that graph by going to the reports center. So reports drop down, reports center. And then let's go into the payables, the vendors and payables on the left-hand side, maximizing this report center again. And we see this graph down here. So they got this graph and I'm going to run that one. I'm going to run that one. And let's change the dates up top to 12, 31, 2, 3. And so there we have, so there we have our graph. So up top we have the aging and then down below we have the pie chart, which is similar to the accounts receivable pie chart. This one, instead of breaking out what is owed to us by customer, giving us what we owe by vendor and you got the similar key on the right hand side the percentages got the 10 customer or vendors and then the rest of them grouped together in this total item for the pie chart this is perfect kind of data for a pie chart because you got that nice breakout breaking everything out to the total down below v nice pie chart we could copy this pie chart as we did in the prior presentation to like a powerpoint do a screen clipping of it and paste it for example, which is nice, but it is somewhat limited. We can't rotate the pie chart. It's in a 3D format, which I feel like is kind of deceptive in some ways, although you can't rotate it, so it's not purposely kind of deceptive because it does make part of the chart look bigger than it otherwise would if it was a flat chart, which can be used, you know, to be kind of manipulative. But, and, and you also can't change the number of 10 vendors over here. So for that reason, you can create this pie chart fairly easily as we did with the accounts receivable by exporting the reports related to the pie chart as well. So those reports would be if I go to the reports center, this pie chart is in essence breaking out down here of the vendor balance summary. So if I run that report, we can see the vendor balance summary. Now I might run this one, I wasn't going to, but notice this one's a lot cleaner than what we did on the customer side because it doesn't have those subtotals so you might have gotten a little bit overwhelmed when we did the, the, the graph in Excel because we had to do some cleaning up of the data. But oftentimes, because that's because it was a job cost system, this one's just a list of items that add up to that bottom line number. Let's make the, the dates from, oh, let's make them from 01, 31, 2, 3 to 12, 31, 2, 3. And so we could just basically export this and, and make a chart from it pretty easily. And so there is that. Also, if we go to the reports then, and by the way, that that number's down here, the 26, 6, uh, 36, 92. The other reports up top are being broken out by the aging report. So if I go to the report center, you could create those. Those are a little bit more complex to create if you were to use the data, but quite possible. You could export this information and basically use the this information to help you with that 
data, which would basically be the totals, making a graph in essence of the totals on down below. So the 23, 177, 72, and the 3,000, 459, 20 for the first two categories, the main categories here going back to our center. So here we have our item around up to that 5,000 and then up to around the 25. So this was around what well, should be around 3,000 and up to like the 23. So it's kind of hard to see on this graph because once again, they made it in that 3D. So where's that line like right there versus right there. So it's not the most specific graph, but you know, you can see a, a good little visual there on that graph. Again, you could create that one in Excel too, using in essence, the, the data from this report. Okay, so that's going to be the general idea. If I go back to this one, also note that you, you might also say, well, where did the percentages come from? Remember, if you put a graph on, on your presentations or in your packages that you're going to provide to a client or you're doing a presentation, even more so, get ready for someone to ask actually ask you about the numbers in the graph. You know, they're going to say, well, what does that, that 26,636 come from? Well, you want to be able to say, okay, that comes from the balance sheet. If you look on the balance sheet, you got the accounts payable 26, 636, 92. And then they're going to say, well, where do the percentages, you know, where do the percentages come from? What is, how do you get those numbers? Well, that's, if you look at the, if you look at the accounts receivable uh, report, the vendor balance detail, and you pull out the trustee calculator for some trustee calculations. Calculator, we need you for the rescue. I can't calculate in my head anymore. Let's just choose a large one like this 6,000. So that's going to be the 6705 divided by the total, which is the 26636.92. And if I move the decimal two places over, it's about 25.17. So if I go back on over here, there's that first one, 25.17. So you want to be able to kind of reference that if people, you know, drill down. Obviously, there's a couple of reasons to give something like this. One is that it does give a nice visual representation of the data, and two, it breaks up all the all the numbers, so you get a nice colorful chart, which is just aesthetically kind of nice. But you want to make sure that uh, although it's kind of aesthetically nice, that you can also break down the numbers, especially if you're in a presentation format, to explain you know why it might logically be in there. And then of course the dates up top you can change, you can print it. Notice it doesn't have the option to save it as a PDF. But if you have your cute PDF printer, you could print it to the cute PDF printer and print this out in that format. And uh, you can also do like screenshots of it and so on to clip it in that format as we did in the prior presentation with the accounts receivable. So next time we might try to recreate these ones, possibly both of these this time in a graph in Excel, which should be a little bit easier. And for many companies, this process will be similar to the accounts receivable. That accounts receivable had a little bit more data due to the job cost system that's being used for this particular company.